This is a little sketchpad lecture on profile leveling. If we need to determine a whole bunch of points elevation without using each one as a turning point like we do in benchmark leveling, then we call this a profile leveling circuit. In profile leveling, we will have one backsight for every setup, but multiple foresights. Let's see how this works. Consider a highway center line that you see here across the top of this page, and it is stationed from 1 plus 0, 0 to 9 plus 0, 0. Perhaps we have some rough stakes out there to give us the location of uh, these points, and we're going to take ground shots at these locations. So, I have two benchmarks, benchmark A and benchmark B. Here I will be starting on benchmark A and I want to end my circuit at benchmark B. Why? Because I can save time in the field by not looping back to where I started if I can check on another nearby benchmark. I know that I can't set up in one location and see the entire length of this center line. That would be looking 450 feet in each direction and could be bad conditions. So I'm going to have two instrument setups. I'll set up my first uh, instrument location right here. So my first reading with my instrument setup will be a backsight on benchmark 1. Then I'm going to take a series of foresights, and those foresights will be in order starting at 1 plus 0, 0 and going to 5 plus 0, 0. When I get to 5 plus 0, 0, I discover that's about as far as I can comfortably read the rod. So that will become a turning point. I tell the rodman to stay there as I move my instrument forward to another location that will allow me to now backsight that location because it's my turning point and then I will foresight the remainder of my profile locations and I will make a final foresight on my benchmark. Well, let's see how we record this data. In normal notes with station, backsight, HI, and foresight listed in the five columns, I also go ahead and list my benchmark A elevation, and I'm listing the stations that I have shot and you can see my benchmark B is going to be my last shot. So my first backsight was as follows, 5.43. Then here were my foresight readings. That takes us all the way to the first turning point and at 5 plus 0, 0, and now we have moved the instrument forward, and when we backsight that, we record that in the backsight column on that point. Then I record my foresights. With all the readings recorded, I'm ready to compute HIs and elevations. Just as we have done before, we will add the elevation and the first backsight to get our first HI. This HI will then become the HI from which we subtract each of these foresights. That is, we measured each of these foresights as a vertical distance below the crosshair whose elevation was 1098.19. So let me calculate those elevations for you.
Well, now we know the elevation of turning point 1, which is, of course, our station 5 plus 0, 0. And I will simply add to that elevation this backside and create my new HI. Just as before, I will subtract the remaining four sites from that setup from this HI. This HI controls the remaining elevations. Now you can see we have our calculated elevation is two hundredths of one foot lower than our known elevation, so we have a closure error of negative 0 0.02. To do our arithmetic check, we know that there are two back sites. Well, of the four sites, only two will apply to this check, and those two are on turning points or benchmarks. Well, that happens here at station 5 plus 0, 0. That was a turning point. And at the benchmark at the end of the circuit. So if I sum those two columns, excluding those points that weren't on turning points or benchmarks, I get these two sums. Well, those will be the basis for my arithmetic check. So I start with my starting elevation, and when I add the sum of the back sites and subtract the sum of the four sites, I get a number that should check with my calculated ending elevation. And in this case, it's okay. This little preview of profile leveling I hope will assist you in your homework.